Biobalance HealthCast 111, Risks and Benefits of Hormone Replacement Therapy. Biobalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging, covering treatment and solutions that include bioidentical hormone pellet therapy, safe and affordable skin rejuvenation, and spa quality botanical skin care. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of Biobalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Welcome to our concluding section of a series of podcasts that we've been doing on a talk that Kathy gave uh, to the St. Louis Family Church. And in today's segment, she will be talking about the risk versus benefit equations and how you make a decision. Is this a good thing for me to do or a good thing for me not to do uh, with regard to hormone replacement? I talk a lot about the delivery systems and how a hormone, there's only three hormones and two that we replace, estrogen and testosterone, how it is safest to replace mm -hmm. those hormones. And that, because I want all of you to be able to Tell your doctor what you've learned and see what he has to say about it or she has to say about it so you can make a decision for yourself. I also answer questions mm -hmm. that you may have had that came from the audience. They submitted them in writing, so I right. had a little lead time. But I answered those questions, and you might find that interesting to see if those questions are also yours. I always ask your doctor, what is the risk of taking this pill or drug if he says, trust me, you're at the wrong place. You need to just say, or you can look it up yourself and ask him about the risks. But you should always know the risks and the benefits of every treatment. But you should also ask one more question that I'm sure you never ask. What are the risks if I don't take it? Because the risks of not taking estrogen, testosterone, after menopause are much higher than the risks of taking it. And that's what you should know about everything you take. What are the risks of not taking it, like blood pressure medicine? The risks may be that you feel tired. It may be that you get, you get faint when you stand up. It may be, that's, that's about it, really, for blood pressure medicine. It may, the tired is a big deal. But what are, what are the risks if I don't take it? Stroke, heart attack, dying. Well, I better take it. So when we, when we look at estrogen and we look at testosterone, the benefits of testosterone are libido, energy, you can read it, good sleep, and not getting Alzheimer's, not getting autoimmune disorders, not getting heart disease, not getting breast cancer. That doesn't mean everybody who takes testosterone is not gonna get breast cancer. It takes, this is another take home, you need, it takes 11 years to go from one breast cancer cell that starts to multiply to when we can see it in a mammogram or in an ultrasound. T 11 years. So if you see somebody who went on hormones of any kind a year ago and they get breast cancer, it doesn't mean that that hormone caused the breast cancer. It means it was already there, we just found it. It's bad timing for the estrogen. But this is testosterone. It protects you from breast cancer. That means just like Alzheimer's, it delays the onset. It, and if you don't have any cells that are already changing, it stops them. It improves your immune system. Cancer requires an abnormal cell and a poor immune system that can't surveil your body and it can't kill that cell right away. So if your immune system is bad, then you're set to have a cancer of some kind because it's gonna get through that, that block of the immune system if your immune system is, is not up to snuff. And what gets our immune system bad to, to decrease? Menopause, low testosterone, and stress. The, the hormone cortisol. When we're stressed, we have cortisol surging. So that stops our immune system from fighting cancer cells. So all of these things are benefits. The risks for testosterone, facial hair. I mean, I had facial hair when I was a kid. I looked, I mean, and as a young adult, I just learned to rip it off with some wax. <laughs> I mean, big deal. I'm Italian. I mean, that's what happens. You know, you get it. And you know that that scene in my big fat Greek wedding? Yeah. <laughs> That's my family. <laughs> we all had them, you know? And so you can just do something about that. That's not a reason not to replace your testosterone. We need it. We need it for so many reasons. A little oily skin, thinning hair. Now, we don't want you to have that because our hairs are crown. So, 
What we do for that is we give, when we give testosterone, we give something, another medication so that we can shut that down. So that we don't have our hair thin and we don't get facial hair either because the same hormone causes both. So when there's a risk written down and somebody tells you the risk, it doesn't mean you're going to get it. It means we have to do something else to make you not get it. So that's, that's one of the things you should know about how doctors speak goes. So treatment, treatment should be replace any hormone that's missing except progesterone. You don't need progesterone with the levels that we give you for menopause unless you have a uterus, okay? When you have a uterus, we have to protect your uterus with progesterone so you don't get uterine cancer. But most women don't feel great on the levels we have to give you uh, on progesterone to get you back up to speed. Estrogen that we give you after menopause is not as high a level or a, um, a blood level as when you were cycling. So we don't need as much progesterone. We don't have to balance it except for your uterus. So I don't believe in giving progesterone to women who are menopausal and don't have a uterus. I give it to people who are menopausal, take estrogen, testosterone, and have a uterus, okay? So oral hormones, any oral hormone is not the best choice. Why? Because when you swallow it, it, unlike other drugs, goes through your stomach to your liver and is immediately converted into some bad byproducts. But if you put it on your skin, you put it inside your hip fat, then like we got it from our ovaries, our ovaries, it went directly from our ovaries to our bloodstream. So when you take it that way, it's safe. When you take it orally, you get all kinds of side effects. And that is something you should avoid. And ask your doctor, just don't yell at him, just say, or her, just say, could I have a non-oral kind? I mean, just ask. You know, we, when somebody like, yells at us, we get really, you know, I, even, you know, I, even I kind of go, Ugh, you know, and so the conversation's kind of over. You don't want to be yelled at either, right? <laughs> so, so just, you know, just ask nicely, and usually they will, they will comply with that. So, okay, so here's how I evaluate patients. I know I'm starting to run over, but I'll, get, I'll wrap it up. Okay, so how I evaluate patients is I have an online questionnaire because I do not want to see somebody who doesn't need to see me, waste their time, waste my time, waste their money. I don't want that. I'm, that's, that's not good for anybody. So I have an online questionnaire, and it asks you all the important questions about your symptoms and what you've experienced. Then I have a nurse call you and say, yes or no, you have the symptoms, we can help you. Or maybe we don't know, we need some blood work. So Aaron, who's sitting here, does half the calls. And then Susie, who knows you all very well, does the other half of the calls, calling back new patients telling them what we need. And I'm very careful on, on female patients. I want to have your last mammogram if you're over 40, your last pap, any age. I want to have your uh, bone density if you're over 45. And I order a whole bunch of blood work. Then I look at it again before you make your appointment. And then if I can help you and if you don't need to see somebody else first, which will tell you, then, then I bring you in for an appointment. We sit down for 45 minutes to an hour, and we go over preventive medicines, supplements, things you can do to achieve your goals. What are your goals? How do you want to feel? What's bothering you the most? What symptoms we can get rid of? What we can do to make you the optimal person, the optimal woman, so that you can go out and not worry about this every five minutes. Like Sometimes you have to like reapply stuff every five minutes and stuff. I don't want to interfere with your life. I want your life to go on, but I want you to be healthier, happier, and actually with less disease in the future. So that's the goal. So then you come into the office. We have this meeting. If you decide you want to get your hormones that day, I figure out a dosage. And then I have my nurses and nurse practitioners place the pellets. It's a very painless procedure. We give you lidocaine. It feels like pressure. I've had them in my hips since I was 47. I've had them in 11 years, and they get replaced about every four months 
for women who are under 65. And over 65, you don't metabolize them as fast, so they're about every six months. So then you, we figure out a maintenance dose when you come back. We redo blood work. We figure out your maintenance dose. And then you just have to come back every four to six months, get your pellets. And then if something changes, we redo blood work. But you don't have to keep getting blood work every five minutes, which is, is costly and it's a pain. But we do make sure that all of your medical problems are attended to. Now, I have a 95% rate of success. But you can see I choose my patients, right? I mean, I don't just go, oh, come on in. Because I might not be successful with people who don't need me. I'll send them, I'll refer them to somebody else who they do need and give them their lab work and they can, they can go get their, their uh, other consultation with a different type of doctor. I, tr I only treat hormones, but I also treat preventive lifestyles. And I try to have everybody who has a problem with their lifestyles and we ask about it, I ask about it, I want you to be well. I want you to follow these directions. If you need mom to tell you, I'll tell you. I'll be mom. And then I'll hold you to it, and our nurses will hold you to it and ask you, are you still doing this? Are you taking that supplement? How are you, how are you feeling with this? And that's important. You need somebody kind of following up with you and, and, and being your, your partner in this. So it's my mission to treat everybody individually with bioidentical hormones. It's also to educate women about the value of their bodies. They only get, you only get one, and you need to take care of it, just like it was your tiny little baby. Just think of your body as like that baby under three months. It was totally dependent on everything you did for it. You took care of that baby with all your heart and mind, and you need to take care of your bodies that way too. And I'm not perfect. In fact, I'm really not perfect. But you can at least try it. You can have a plan. You can go for it. And then get a partner who's a friend who you can talk to, who you can check up on each other, somebody you love that will love you back and help you and not criticize you. So I, I, the book that I, that I wrote with Brett Newcomb is uh, The Secret Female Hormone Testosterone because that's one thing women don't know about. And we need to know about this. And I have no idea why it hasn't been talked about or brought to the attention of the OBGYN, I guess it's, it's facial hair. They don't like facial hair or something, but that's, why you came back from the other side. that's right. That's why I came back from the other side to talk about this. So, um, and I'd like to educate and train doctors in the future. I haven't started, I have one doctor that I've trained in California, but I'd like to educate and train doctors to take care of patients like we do. So that's, those are my, those are my missions. And these are the places that I can, I can be found, the BioBalance website. We have m things called menus, but it really is just everything we do out there. And they're, they're like little books. You can pick one up. But this is not a commercial. This is just, what can you do to be better? And there are other people who do testosterone in different forms or in pellets. So it's not just, I, I don't have the only game in town. There are other people who do this. This is just how I do this. OK? Now, I have a couple questions that I didn't answer and I don't know how much time I have to answer the quest or at, uh, answer the questions for you, but I thought I ha there's a couple that are easy. Do toddlers have hormones? And they were talking about boys, and of course, yeah, they do. We talk, we kind of answered that, but boys and girls both have hormones, and boys have don't really get estrogen until they get old. That's that's that man boob thing. They get some estrogen <laughs> as they get older. You can see it on the senior tour. <laughs> Watch, walking, them, walking them down the fairway and then their, their breasts are jumping. It's not, it's not pretty on men. I don't know why it's so pretty on us. So um, let's see. Foods that affect your hormones. I had a question, do certain foods affect your hormones? Soy is one of them. Soy acts as an estrogen. And it's great if you're living by the ocean and have plenty of iodine in your body and in your diet. But for those of us who live in the no iodine belt, you all should be taking iodine too because we live in the Midwest. We don't have enough and, it, and we don't eat salt anymore. So we need iodine to keep our thyroids going. So if you have soy that you like to eat, moderation is key and you have to get your thyroid going because it'll shut your thyroid down. So then your hormones will be even more off balance eventually. So I think soy is, is probably 
the one food that people who live here should keep at bay a little bit. Um, good question. Are American women estrogen dominant because of the hormones in our food? That's part of the story. We have a lot of estrogen dominance because of, of the hormones in our food. We inject cattle that, and, and cows that make our milk with estrogens and growth hormone. That's not good for us. If you can go to a place that has grass-fed beef that doesn't have any injections, you can find it. I mean, Whole Foods has it. I don't know where else you can find it, or you can get your own beef slaughtered that is grass-fed and no hormones. But that is one of the reasons. It's one of the reasons we're getting all the plastics in our diet, and, you know, and not in our diet, but holding our foods. All those have estrogens in them. They act as estrogens in our bodies, and that's part of it. And the other fact is that America is fatter than it should be. And so when we make fat, we make lots of estrogen in our fat. And so we're estrogen dominant because of all of those things. It's not just one thing. So we have to be careful about like water bottles, although these have been changed in the last few years. They've changed the water bottles to not have the chemicals that create estrogen. So um, let's see. Natural progesterone cream, I think you heard my answer. What's my opinion? I think that if it works for you, it's great. If it, it doesn't hold you, then you're going to feel up and down, kind of PMS-y, and I don't necessarily think that's a great way to feel. So there is something out there that's better than that, the sublingual tablets from, from the um, compounding pharmacies. But your doctor has to write the prescription, so you have to convince them or find a doctor that believes in all this which is getting more and more. They're starting to be more, much more attuned to bioidentical hormones. Um, let's see. Okay, helping your daughter. How do you help your daughter through um, puberty? I don't know. I, you know, I don't know if there is any, any help because when you help, they hate you more. <laughs> And we all walked the walk, you know, we all went through pu puberty. We know how vicious and horrible we felt and acted. And we can't really, we can't do much with their hormones because their hormones are starting to evolve, you know. They're, they're starting to come into their own and there's a lot of imbalance in that when they're trying to come into being a mature woman. So you have to be patient, you have to say your prayers, and you have to not give them too much direction. A, pri a, a, priest, told, a priest told me once when I was crying at... <laughs> I was at an, one of those kind of fat farm things where you go and you exercise and exercise. And we were doing water aerobics, and I asked this priest why my daughter hated me because between the ages of, she was like 15. And he said, you're a purple refrigerator. She's embarrassed to show you to her friends, but she needs you for nutrition, and she needs you for everything she needs in her life, so, but she's totally embarrassed of you. And so she's just not watching. Now, if you have wonderful daughters, then thank God, because most of us go through these horrible stages, and we all remember when we did, and we were mean to our moms, and, and that's, that's not, I mean, there's really no excuse for that, but then again, sometimes it's unavoidable because hormones are out of control. Um, let's see. Oh, there's a question about heart palpitations at the time. Why do I have ha heart palpitations at the time of my period? And when you're at, when, that's a lack of hormone. That's what, right before your period, the day after when your period starts, you have almost no estrogen, almost no progesterone, and your testosterone's lower too. So it, it allows your heart, if it was going to have palpitations, if it was going to start going fast, then that kind of lowers the bar so that your heart's going to start having these. The other option is you have a high thyroid. So that could be checked with blood tests. Um, we talked about irregular cycles. I got some questions about that. Um, I got the question, I'm postmenopausal. Do I need hormones and do I need them forever? Yes and yes. Yes, you do. If you don't want to be, if you can take hormones, you need to take them. I mean, if there's no good reason why you can't replace your hormones, that other than you don't want to deal with it, then you should because you're going to, you're going to, it's pay it, 
forward. You're going to end up being a much healthier, older person than if you don't do it. You're going to have better bones, better muscles, better brain, better everything, lower risk of heart disease. It keeps you from getting plaque on your vessels. Yes, you should take it, and yes, you should take it as long as you possibly can. Usually, my mother-in-law and, mo and my mother were in nursing homes. The minute they got there, um, they put them on estrogen because they thought it made their brains work better, and they thought it, it and, and both of them went, what, you know, but they took it, and it did help them actually be more aware and actually be better, but that's way too late, and my mother never listened to me, okay? She was an herbalist. She took no medicines, so that's kind of why I like natural hormones. She was, you know, she was like over here, and I said, I'm going to teach you. I'm going to become a doctor, <laughs> and I did. So she didn't ever listen to what I said, and she did kind of, she paid the price. She had terrible osteoporosis, which she eventually, her back collapsed. She pretty much died of that at 92. But she was in pain for years. So, so we have a long life. We need to think about yes. being healthy yes. the whole time and not just being healthy or making it easy. Nothing is easy. Nothing God gives you to do is easy. Nothing he's ever given me to do is easy. It always has been the hard way. I beat my head against the wall, and then I go, okay, it's yours, and then it, it works. You know, I mean, I don't give up soon enough. So you should surrender this because you need, you need to get back what you're missing, and, be, and then you can be all you can be until the last day. So that's what I have for you guys, and I am so happy you're here. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today as we present the last of a series of podcasts that are based on a speech that Kathy gave to the St. Louis Family Church. If this is the first segment that you've encountered, you may want to go to drkathymoppin.com and see the other three segments. I'm so grateful for the women of the Family Church and Pastor Patsy for inviting me because they gave me a platform and, and to show my mission. Because my mission is to educate and to treat women so that they can feel well the rest of their lives. And part of that has to do with teaching women about how safe estrogen replacement is and testosterone replacement and how you can go through treatment, how you can get to a doctor who will take care of you. So if you have any questions, then you can go to my website at biobalancehealth.com and look at many of the articles and many of the pieces of information that will coordinate with these podcasts that we've done for you. So. I welcome you to the site and I thank the church. And if you or your group decides that you're interested in having Kathy come and talk to you or Kathy and I come and do a presentation for your group, you can contact us directly through email at podcast at biobalancehealth.com. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance Healthcast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. Follow Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Brett Newcomb can be found at brettnewcomb.com.